Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Saturday, October the 26th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I'm doing this video from Northern California. They're telling us that in a couple of hours they're going to start rolling blackouts throughout Northern California, right? PG&E, their official story is that due to the wildfire risk, they need to do rolling blackouts. Now by coincidence, of course, PG&E is dealing with bankruptcy, right? And of course the American economy is on quicksand right now so I'm just telling you it's blackouts in California today just expect blackouts to roll through other states in the United States right we laugh when it happens to countries like Venezuela guess what folks it's happening now right welcome to the end of the economic boom well, let's get back to boxing enough politics the featherweight division. Let's take a look at the featherweight division. Now you've heard me here online use a phrase, freak athlete. And I believe in life, occasionally, you're going to run into some guys who are like Jim Thorpe was. Just better athletes than everyone around them. Right? So if you're from my era, you remember watching Bo Jackson make NFL players look slow. You remember Herschel Walker at Georgia, right? Being a freak athlete doesn't last forever. You remember Mike Trout early in his career when he was stealing bases. Right now, right now, you're looking at Lamar Jackson, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. And you just realize that the guy can throw the ball farther than everybody else in the games he's in. The guy can run faster than practically everyone else in the games he's in. Uh, juking guys for him is just second nature. He doesn't even think about it. He'll run around the side. There'll be a linebacker. He just assumes he can juke the linebacker and get in the end zone. Right, I would say he's a freak athlete. We'll add a couple of names to the list. Jalen Ramsey's a freak athlete. Miles Jarrett, Cleveland Browns, he's a freak athlete. Well, in boxing, in my opinion, Shakur Stevenson at featherweight is a freak athlete. First, you look at him and you have to ask the obvious question. How is this guy a featherweight? Right, he's bigger than other people. You know, you're saying, my God, you know, this guy is making weight? It's just shocking. Well, let me just point out that he's fast. You look at his hand speed and it's just amazing. You look at talented opponents trying to collapse the pocket on him, trying to get close to him. Try to be able to hit him with shots to the body. Folks, that's much harder than it looks. This is like young Roy Jones. Right? You're looking at him, you're saying, man, if a guy just gets inside and roughs up this guy's body, that might slow Roy down. And then you realize that the trick in the whole thing, the fly in the ointment, is trying to get inside on Roy Jones. Now, Shakur Stevenson, just some background here. He spars with, in my opinion, the best possible person to spar with in the entire sport of boxing. Right? He spars with the Bill Belichick of boxing, Terrence Crawford. Right? The secret to Terrence Crawford is that Terrence Crawford, like the New England Patriots in the NFL, is a different fighter every fight depending on who his opponent is. So some fights, Terrence is on his front foot. Some fights, Terrence is on his back foot. Right? Revisit a fight that I'm starting to realize is a masterpiece. Revisit Terrence Crawford against Amir Khan. Forget about the ending. Just look at the fight itself. You have Khan who has faster hands than Terrence Crawford. 
right? And you'll notice Terrence Crawford somehow, given that Khan is fast and Khan can throw up top, Terrence Crawford somehow is able early in the fight to reach Khan's body and to pivot away from the pocket. The person creating the moving pocket in that fight is Terrence Crawford. Now, if you're a young guy, your dream is to be sparring with one of the sport's best pound for pound, right? who has a multiplicity of styles. I'm guessing if you spar with Terrence Crawford and Crawford decides to test out, you know, plan A one day, then plan B, then plan C, then plan D, then plan E, and stuff like that. I imagine it must be like going up against Tom Brady in practice. Right? Shakur Stevenson, who was a decorated amateur who barely missed out on winning the gold medal in the Olympics, is able to spar with one of the very best in boxing. You know, he's able to also, let's hope, and I don't know this, but I'm assuming Shakur Stevenson is savvy enough to do this. He should also be able to get advice, not just boxing advice, but life advice from Terrence Crawford, who's traveling many of the roads that Shakur Stevenson wants to travel, right? Big fights, uh, pound for pound recognition, uh, different divisions, right? So Stevenson, at this stage of his career, is in the catbird seat. But understand, this is the rough neighborhood part of the internet, isn't it? Right? This is not a fan site. We're going to nitpick here. Let's criticize Stevenson a little bit. Stevenson is big. He likes to extend his arms. In other words, Stevenson needs space. Right? He needs space. Also, Stevenson has power. Don't get me wrong. But he's not on the list of the hardest punchers in the sport. Right? Stevenson is not a guy who can sit down on punches and take you out. He's not Mikey Garcia. Right? He's not a guy who you know. Gervonta Davis. Right? Who you understand. Wow, his opponent is getting beaten to the punch. That means his opponent's on the clock. Stevenson, in my opinion, is not that guy. Right? He's a guy who beats you with length, athleticism, slickness. Right? You're unable to get inside on him. He's able to hit you from distance. He leverages his height. Right? That's a great attribute. But understand, there are certain people in boxing. We just watched the fight. Arthur Perturbiev against Grovestick. There are certain people in boxing who are going to try to walk you down. Who are going to try to walk through your hand speed who have big punches who are determined to get inside and who are going to be so determined that like Hagler like Mike Tyson like Arthur Perturbiev right they're going to make it look like you're running if you don't stand there in the pocket and trade with them Right, so you have to have a hell of a jab and a back foot game to bust them up as they try to walk you down. Right, Sonny Liston tries to walk down Ali. Right, first fight he couldn't find Ali. Right, according to boxing folklore, he even loads his gloves up with liniment. They get in Ali's eyes. Ali is blind for one of the rounds. It's one of the better rounds in boxing history. Sonny Liston on his front foot has a blind Ali in front of him and can't find him. Right? Well, in the rematch, Sonny Liston's still on his front foot, folks. That's when we get the so-called phantom punch. I think Liston walks right into an Ali right hand. Well, just understand, Shakur Stevenson, sooner or later, in my opinion, as he gets bigger, he's not going to stay at welterweight forever. Nobody has to say anything to you. All you have to do is look at his size and know this guy can't stay at welterweight forever, right? Just like I can tell you with confidence, Callum Smith can't stay at 168 forever. Danny Jacobs, 
you knew he couldn't stay at 160 forever. He's moving up to 168. So understand, if Shakur Stevenson gains weight, he's going to run into an Arthur Perturbi of type. Right? Heavy-handed guy who's prepared to get hit, who's prepared to trade. If he's savvy, maybe a Mike Tyson guy who can actually move his upper body. Slip your jab. Get inside. He's going to run into that guy someday. And he's going to get tested. Like Ray Leonard, another hard-to-hit guy, was tested in the first Duran fight, which Ray Leonard lost. That's Ray Leonard's first loss. So as I look at this fight, and I understand the back story, right? Stevenson apparently goes out with Joette Gonzalez's sister, or something like that, a family member of Joette Gonzalez. And let's just say, right, brother-in-law, you know, future brother-in-law perhaps, just isn't that enamored of Stevenson, who has, if you research his past, had some problems outside of the ring. Right? Stevenson strikes me as how a lot of young guys strike me, right? I was young once. You have the world on a string. You have a little bit of an attitude. You're cocky. You feel it's all going to come to you. Maybe you're not on your best behavior all the time, right? So, Joette Gonzalez thinks the world of his sister, I believe it is, and doesn't think the world of Stevenson. Stevenson knows it. So the two men are in the ring. They don't like each other. There's going to be heightened emotion in the fight. Gonzalez is unbeaten, as is Stevenson. But the backstory to me is trumped by the fact that Gonzalez isn't, in my opinion, an Arthur Berturbi of type guy. He's patient. Right? He has his hands up. He waits. He's not Marvin Hagler barreling in. He's not Sonny Liston coming in behind a jab. That's not who he is. Right? He's a little bit more patient. He's cautious. Now, being cautious will win you some fights because you're not in a rush. Right? You understand this fight might go some rounds. You're not going to panic. But being patient and cautious, Bernard Hopkins in the first Roy Jones fight loses you the fight against this kind of freak athlete. Right? Understand, Stevenson, if you don't collapse the pocket, if you don't set up the dynamic that Perturbiev did against Grovesdick, and keep in mind, that takes 10 rounds to develop, right? Perturbiev is trying to crash the pocket. The announcers are calling it Big Brother versus Little Brother, right? And even in that fight, it took several rounds, right? If you're not that determined to crash the pocket against a Shakur Stevenson, especially at featherweight where he's a freak athlete, right? His body hasn't broken down yet a little bit, like Mike Trout's body has. Right? He's not Deion Sanders after the bad toe. This is Deion Sanders before the bad toe. Right? Shakur Stevenson is still in his prime. He has a physical superiority, in my opinion. I believe Stevenson should sweep the early rounds, even if it gets rough and tumble later. Right? Even if Stevenson slows down a little bit, right? I mean, after all, fighters are mortal like the rest of us. Even if the fight gets rough and tumble later, I believe Stevenson is going to be so far ahead on the scorecards that I don't believe Gonzalez is going to have the opportunity to beat him. Right? I like Shakur Stevenson, the favorite to win this fight. More importantly, I think Stevenson is someone you need to look at hard. Because as this guy, just like you would look at Callum Smith, just like you're looking at Danny right now, Danny Jacobs moving up to 168. Right? By the way, I think Jacobs clobbers Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. when that fight takes place later this year in Las Vegas. 
Shakur Stevenson is going to gain weight. And then the question is going to be, right, is he going to have enough of a back foot game to keep guys like a Gervonta Davis off of him? Right, that's going to be the big question down the road. But that's down the road. Right now in this fight, at this weight class, with Stevenson having these physical gifts, with Stevenson being young without the wear and tear of a fighter in his late 20s who's been through wars, I just think Stevenson, who I consider to be a freak athlete, quick hands, right? Just look at how hard it's going to be for Gonzalez, an unbeaten fighter, to even set up a small pocket. He won't be able to. Just look at how Stevenson, as Gonzalez comes in, will be able to just think of throwing punches and has the hand speed on a dime to pivot and throw those punches. Right at featherweight, Shakur Stevenson is simply too dominant. I like Shakur Stevenson in this one. You're not going to put a kid through college with this betting line. With Stevenson, I'm afraid to say things like Stevenson by KO and stuff like that. Because I just don't think the guy has that level of punching ability. Right? I just don't. But I could be wrong. I like Stevenson to win this fight. Pay close attention to him. Recognize, too, that things work two ways when he spars with Terrence Crawford, right? From the Stevenson angle, he's in against a KG vet, a guy who was undisputed at 140, right? A guy who, like Bill Belichick, has a lot of strategies, is very savvy. But understand, Crawford is in with a freak athlete who's cat quick, right? Cat quick who's hard to find in the ring. So I'm sure that helps sharpen Crawford's reflexes. So when Crawford's in with an Amir Khan who doesn't move his body as quickly as Stevenson, but who probably has faster hands, and it's debatable, right? Crawford's prepared for fights like that because he gets an opportunity to spar with this young lion. Right? So Stevenson, to me, is a fighter you need to look at. You need to watch this fight, not so much for this fight. I think Stevenson wins this fight. But in handicapping Stevenson, in assessing Stevenson for future fights, because for me it's a foregone conclusion that this guy is going to gain weight. And this guy with this level of athleticism is going to be a factor in other weight classes. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. In a sentence, Stevenson, too much athleticism, length, and hand speed. Right? I think that's going to carry the day in this fight. That's how I see it. Thanks for stopping by.